Section 9-2, example 2, practicing the formulas. So we're just going to practice the formulas a little bit, and then we'll actually do a full hypothesis test. Um, the formula is a little intimidating, so um, we want to get some practice. So we're just going to practice finding the test stat, which is the z-score and the p-value. So before I start, I'm just going to write down the formula for the z-score. It's going to be p-hat minus p0 all over the square root of p0 times 1 minus p0 all over n. So it's an ugly formula. I usually like to put parentheses around that top. It helps um, type it on the calculator correctly. So we have a hypothesis um, where p is equal to 0.2164, and our h1, we want to prove that p is greater than 0.2164. So that'll be p0. p0 is the one from the hypothesis. p0 is 0 0.2164. Um, our alpha is 0.05, so that's our cutoff, which we'll talk about when we get there. And then our x, that would be our number of successes, is 114. And n is the total at 413. So p hat would just be 114 out of 413. Um, I went ahead and divided, and I got 0 0.2760. So yeah, it's a bit bigger than the 21. So 26% compared to 21%. It's a bit bigger. Um, so let's go ahead and find the z-score to figure out if it's big enough or if it's just random. So we'll point, do 0 0.2760 minus 0 0.2164 all over, and then make sure you're using p0 in the denominator. So 0.2164 times 1 minus 0.2164 all over n of 413. And then I'll add parentheses to the top and just type everything at once. So go ahead and type it, and then check that you get the same answer as me. So I got 2.941 for my z-score. So again, that means it's probably strong evidence because it's beyond that two standard deviations, but we're going to do the p-value to assess the risk. So p-value means we draw the normal curve. I'm going to put the z-score of 2.941 on the curve. Um, we're doing a greater than, so I'm going to shade to the right. And then we will do normal CDF. We find the area. So the p-value is the area. So it's normal CDF. My lower is 2.941, and my upper is 10 to the 99 for infinity. Go ahead and calculate that and check that you get the same number. And we get a little risk, 0, 0, 1, 6. It's pretty unlikely that it's random if the percent actually is 21. So because it's so unlikely, we're going to reject that and say the percent is actually bigger. So that's why we reject. Very little risk. And basically the idea was my cutoff was 05. And so since this is less than 05, 5% was the most risk I would take, but I'm way under 5% at 0.16%. Um, if you're visual, um, we have 0 to 0.05, so this is the risk we're willing to take is anything between 0 and 0.05, up to 1 because that would be 100%, and so 0.0016 is within the acceptable risk. Anything past 0.05 would be too much risk. So let's try the formula again. Uh, so we have a not equal, so we have my null hypothesis is p equals 0 0.60, and I want to prove that p is not 60% or 0 0.60. So that's my p0 is 0 0.60. And then my p hat is 0 0.6548. So a little bit different. So that's my sample. So we're going to go ahead and plug into that same formula. z is p hat minus p0 all over p0, 1 minus p0 over n. So we get my sample, 0 0.6548, minus 
minus 0 0.60 all over all this. 0 0.60, 1 minus 0 0.60 over 281, all inside a square root. Go ahead and type that. Make sure you put parentheses on top or you do it in more than one step. Now I get a z-score of like 1.875. So even though 65 felt a bit different, right? 65, 48 felt different than 60. Maybe it's not different enough because I'm within two standard deviations. So let's check that out with the p-value. And it gets a little bit different for these two tailed. So we have 1.875. But since we have not equaled, we have two tailed. Which means we're actually going to look at the area bigger than 1.875, but we're also going to look at the other tail, the negative 1.875. That's what two tailed looks like. So basically what we do is we're going to find the p-value. The area will be normal CDF of 1.875 up to 10 to the 99. And then rather than finding both tails, I can just times it by 2 to double it to find the second one. So you only have to double it for two-tailed because there's two tails. So we'll do normal CDF, 1.875 to infinity or 10 to the 99. And then make sure you double it. And we get... 0.0608. So the risk is little, it's only 6%, but we said we're only gonna take 5% risk. So because it's past that 5%, 0 0.0608, right? It's past that 5%, it's too much risk, and we do not reject. So we didn't have enough evidence to reject HO and say H1 was true. So that's just called not rejecting. It just means maybe HO is still true. So the decision rule is when the p-value is lesser than or equal to alpha, then we'll go ahead and reject. That's what we did in example one. The type of, the risk of type one error is acceptably low. So we'll go ahead and take the risk. Um, in example two, p-value is greater than alpha. Um, so we did not reject because the risk of making a type 1 error is too high. Um, and so the idea is, is when we reject, it means we're saying HO is false. So H1 must be true. And then the other case, we're actually not saying HO is true. We're just saying HO might be true. We don't know. We don't have evidence. Or could be, right? Let's see. Yeah. So let's go over the steps of a hypothesis test, and then we can try one. So the procedure for performing a hypothesis test for P, the population proportion, is first we need to find the requirements. So NP0 needs to be greater than or equal to 10. And NQ0, or N times 1 minus Q0, needs to be greater than or equal to 10. And that way, p-hat will be normal. So step one and step two are that introduction or the setup, where we find the hypothesis and alpha. It's, these are just like an introduction to an English paper. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and investigate. So this is like collecting data and investigating. This is the evidence. So we find the z-score or the test statistic using that formula that I already went over. Um, I stick with three decimal places, and again, P0 is the claimed value for P from the hypothesis. And then normal CDF will tell us the p-value. And then, just like in science or English, we need a conclusion. So reject or do not reject, and then we usually rewrite it in everyday language for step six. Um, and then this is what it looks like in the calculator, so make sure you add those parentheses to help type. So let's go ahead and try one. So a lot of steps, let's just go for it. So on TV shows like American Idol, contestants often wonder if there's an advantage or disadvantage to performing last. 
So that's kind of like my research question. Um, to investigate, researchers randomly select a sample of 600 college students. So that sounds like sample size to me. And equals 600. And showed each of them an audition video of 12 different singers. So for each student, the videos were shown, shown in a random order. Um, so we would expect approximately one out of 12 students to prefer the last singer they viewed, assuming order doesn't matter, right? If order doesn't matter, then the last person should be getting a uniform preference, right? Everyone should be getting one out of 12. So that's kind of like a claim. That's the claimed proportion. Um, but in this study, 65 of the 600 preferred the last singer. So let's go ahead and perform a hypothesis test at 5%, that's alpha, significance to see if there is an advantage or disadvantage to performing last. So we're in proportion land um, because our variable is um, who they prefer. They prefer last or not. So this is a proportion, it's last or not. There's no numerical data. So let's go ahead and set up a hypothesis. We know it involves P for proportions. And then my claim proportion is 1 12th. So it'll equal 1 12th. And then advantage or disadvantage just means it's not equal. Um, if you want to divide and get a decimal, 1 12th would be 0 So an advantage would be more than 8%, right? And a disadvantage would be less than 8%. So it could be either, so it's not equal. And then we go ahead and state alpha, which is 0.05. That'll be our cutoff. Um, and so let's go ahead and investigate. So my sample tells me that N is 600. P hat will be the 65 out of 600. Um, go ahead and divide. I get 0 0.1083, so it's a little bit bigger than 0 0.0833, um, but we'll have to investigate with z-scores and um, p-values to decide if it's different enough. So step three, let's go ahead and find the z-score. p-hat minus p-zero all over that square root. So if you're feeling confident, pause the video and plug in, and then check back with me. So go ahead and pause. And I got 2.216. And if you didn't get this number, I can show you how that works on the calculator. So I put the top in parentheses. Oops, I did the top backwards, but my answer is correct. The sample value comes first, hypothesis value comes second. We get 2.216. So um, maybe I am rejecting, right? This is beyond two standard deviations. Um, so maybe this was strong enough evidence, but let's find the p-value. So this will be two-tailed, because it's not equal. So that means we'll be doubling. Um, I just always draw the normal curve because it reminds me of what to do. So we're gonna draw 2.216 on the curve. So since it's two-tailed, we'll look at the symmetric one, negative 2.216. Um, but we only have to find the area of one of these and then we can double it. So anytime you have not equal, you look at both. So the p-value will be double for two-tailed, normal CDF. My lower is 2.216 up to 10 to the 99 and just double it. And maybe we've done enough that I don't have to show the calculator. I get 0 0.0267 after doubling. So our cutoff was 05. That's the most risk we would take. So we would say this is little risk because it's less than what 
our cutoff of O5. So we're gonna go ahead and reject. If people truly, um, if there is no advantage or disadvantage to going last, there's only a 2% chance we'd get a sample this high. So it's more likely that there is an advantage or disadvantage. So we're gonna go ahead and reject HO. We're rejecting that P equals 112. So we're saying it doesn't equal 112. So there must be an advantage or disadvantage. So there is evidence, there is strong evidence to show, and I usually say at 5%, just so someone would know our cutoff. If you ever look at scientific studies, they'll state what their alpha was to show there is an advantage or disadvantage to going last. We haven't proved which one yet, but we know that one of them. All right, we just have two more parts and then we'll end the video. So the requirements are n times p0 and then n times one minus p0. So n was 600, p0 was 112. So one minus 112 will be q. And I get 50 and I get Five fifty. Both are well over ten. So the requirements are met. All right, and then we're probably curious, right? Is there an advantage or disadvantage? Um, that's important. So I think because our p hat was about ten percent, point one zero eight three, which is greater than 0 0.0833, I think that means there's an advantage because people are liking the last person more. So it seems to be an advantage. It doesn't tell us why, it just proves there is an advantage. But it might be that like you remember the last person the best, right? You don't vote till the end in shows like American Idol, so the last person, maybe you remember them a little bit better and maybe they're not necessarily the best. But it just proves that an advantage exists, not why.